Hi everybody, this is Agnesa from No Sediment and today we're going to talk about five great age-worthy red wines that you can easily forget in your cellar, open 10 years later and still enjoy as they will not only be drinkable but probably will gain some complexity. To my knowledge, wine is the only agricultural product that not only can be aged for several years or even decades, but with time become better or more complex and even see increase in price. However, 99% of all the wines available in the market and seen on shelves are meant for early consumption and probably will not improve if spent years in bottle. In fact, they offer more bright fruit and expressive aromas when young. But which red wines do have the aging potential? We all have heard about the greatness of Bordeaux and mystery around Burgundy wines, so this time I will leave them out, as they are not the only two winemaking regions that are capable of making age-worthy red wines. Let's go! Majority of red wines in my cellar are Barolos. This is a small winemaking region located in Italy, Piemonte. Wines must be made from grape variety native to this region, Nebbiolo. When looking at the wine very technically, there are few elements that are often praised to increase wine's aging potential. These are tannins, alcohol, acidity, and sugar. The understanding being, the higher the level of these elements, the higher is the aging potential of the wine. And Nebbiolo has three of them. It develops very high levels of tannins, high levels of acidity, and elevated levels of alcohol. Therefore, on paper, Barolo wines are meant for long aging. And actually, they do age really beautifully. I especially like the flavors Nebbiolo develops with age that are often linked with fresh mushrooms, truffles and forest floor. At the same time, it can be quite floral and express a range of flowers such as roses, lilac and violets. 10 years is easy for Barolo and the greatest examples can live way longer. Buying Barolos now is a great decision as I truly believe that these wines will become more expensive in near future and we might not be able to afford them anymore. The same way we feel now about the Burgundy. This should be no surprise to a true Spanish wine lovers. Most of the greatest wines from this region will be made from 100% Tempranillo grape variety or locally known as Tinta del Pais. Tempranillo from Rivera del Duero tends to be rich and full-bodied with expressive dark fruit flavors, highly concentrated and high levels of ripe, tannins. In contrast to Rioja examples, Rivera del Duero is less associated with the classical Spanish aging terms such as crianza, reserva and gran reserva, which we might take as a hint that instead of aging wine in the cellars of a winemaker, we must age these wines ourselves. Age these wines in your cellars for 10 or 15 years, but the greatest examples can live even longer. I agree with those who say that Napa Cabernet Sauvignon now is made more approachable in its youth, meaning that you can enjoy it quite early and it not necessarily requires a long cellaring. But these wines still show great aging potential. I recently opened a bottle of 2010 vintage and it did not show any age on the nose or palate. In the blind tasting, I would not have guessed that this wine was 12 years old it was still very fresh. The only issue for those who are trying to stock their cellars here in Europe is the fact that Napa Cabernet Sauvignon is quite difficult to get. Most of the Chateauneuf du Pape wines will be blend of several grape varieties. Majority will be based on Grenache grape variety, and this is where it becomes interesting. This grape variety is not known to be highly acidic or develop high levels of tannins, 
and what's even worse, it is prone to oxidation. Yet, despite these factors, it is still capable of creating wines with great aging potential. Yes, it does develop higher levels of alcohol, and yes, it is often blended with the reductive grape variety Syrah. But there are producers that make 100% Grenache-based Chateauneuve du Pape wines, and they age gracefully. But few of us get to experience it, because majority of these wines are drunk quite young. Maybe it is because they are still very approachable in their price tag, and we feel less guilty when opening that bottle. And maybe it is simply because they are quite tasty in their youth. But Chateauneuf du Pape wines can age though, and laying them down to open 10 years later may reward you with complex, elegant red wine that shows depth of flavors that lingers on the palate for quite a long time. Another great wine from Italy. Brunello di Montalcino is an appellation that is located in Tuscany and these wines must be made from 100% Sangiovese grape variety. Sangiovese can be made into light and refreshing wines with bright red fruit, but it is also capable of producing complex, rich and well-structured red wines with great aging potential. For me, the sweet spot of Brunello di Montalcino is 8 to 12 years old. I also want to note something else. And it applies not only to Brunello, but to all wines we have discussed here, and in fact, any wine that we wish to put in our cellars for a longer period of time. Appellation or region alone does not mean that wine will be great or will have capacity to age. Next to a great terroir and grape variety, we also must find a producer that has quality in mind. Great vintage also helps. So here are five great age-worthy red wines for your cellar or wine fridge. But I don't want you to blame me if 10 years later you open a bottle of wine and that bottle is bad. So I made a video on mistakes to avoid when you are cellaring your wine.